It's Sean from Shooty School. MIDI files are what feeds TuneTrack software the beats and melodies you buy or create. TuneTrack has fantastic quality MIDI that comes included with their products, and you can also buy additional TuneTrack MIDI add-on packs. If you still want to use this MIDI for composing, here's how you can expand your MIDI collection with third-party MIDI without breaking the bank, and I'll also cover installing, tips, and workflow. Let's get started. Understanding how linked folders work with TuneTrack software is the key to all this becoming a very easy and a streamlined process. Linked folders are just like the average TuneTrack MIDI folders on the Grooves tab, except you have control of what goes into them and can customize and make as many as you wish for your wants and needs. So we can take our third-party MIDI purchases and organize them into folders on our computer and then simply link them to Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Easy Bass, or Easy Keys and use them just like TuneTrack MIDI folders. So come with me if you're ready to expand your MIDI collection, save money, and learn a new valuable workflow. But first we'll discuss what third-party MIDI is so everyone can follow along. A lot of third-party MIDI exists on the web for you to purchase. I'll just use the few companies that I've bought from in the past as an example in this video. I'm at GrooveMonkey.com and I'm listening to a demo of a product that I'm interested in. Remember, MIDI has nothing to do with sounds and tones. Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer and the other TuneTrack products are the programs that provide the sounds and the tones. The MIDI just provides the actual drum beat or groove that these programs perform. MIDI is just musical instructions for your software. In most cases, third-party MIDI is recorded by a professional human musician like what GrooveMonkey provides. I happened to buy the GrooveMonkey Mega Pack a while back, which is all of their drum MIDI packs combined, including free future drum pack releases. I only mention it because it's the only company that I know that does a deal like this. Here it is on my desktop, and I'll unzip it. After purchasing third-party MIDI, I'm either presented with a simple folder to unzip that contains the actual MIDI or an installer. Now that I understand how simple linked folders work within TuneTrack software, I try to avoid installers when possible, resulting in a much cleaner install process. You'll have to decide what's best for you after watching this video and depending on which vendor you purchased from. In this mega pack example, if I avoid the installer and just look around in the other folders, I will discover that the MIDI I need for TuneTrack is right here. I don't need the BFD or the Get Good Drums MIDI mapping and so on. I just need the TuneTrack mapped MIDI folder. And I'll drag it out to my desktop. I'll unzip it. And now we've isolated and optimized our third party purchase down to this single folder. Let's change gears for one minute. We just organized our purchase, but where do we put it? It's really simple to link your purchase third-party MIDI folder after you've decided where on your computer or hard drive you want to put it. So let's figure that out. I recommend storing your third-party MIDI in a location it can stay for a long time, since your TuneTrack products will reference this location every time you launch them. Luckily, MIDI files are extremely small in size. So putting them on your main computer's hard drive shouldn't be a problem. Like in your main documents directory, you could make a new folder called My MIDI or Third Party MIDI, just as an example, and put all of your third party MIDI purchases there to stay organized. Now I could drag my mega pack that I just unzipped into there or Create some subfolders if I intend on staying even more organized. I'll put two more folders inside of my newly created third party MIDI folder and I'll call them Groove Monkey Drum MIDI and Groove Monkey Bass MIDI so I know exactly what is where at a glance. And after I purchased a Groove Monkey Bass MIDI pack, which we'll notice doesn't even have an installer, 
I can just unzip it and drag it to the appropriate base MIDI folder I just created. This is a great example of staying organized, but there are no requirements. You just need to know where your third-party MIDI is on your computer. That's it. It's up to you. This process can be as simple or detailed as you wish. I like the detailed route because I'm building a long-term system and workflow. I personally use a second internal or external hard drive for my MIDI files, so in the future, as I change computers or reinstall my operating system, my third-party MIDI never gets deleted or moved. So let's see how simple it is to get your TuneTrack products to find and then present to you your third-party MIDI purchases. How do we set up linked folders in your TuneTrack software? Well. You just need to remember where you stored your third-party MIDI after purchase. That's it. We'll only have to link to them once and it will be accessed permanently from here on out or until you move the MIDI, change systems, or change your tune track settings. In Easy Drummer, go to the Grooves tab and look in the Options drop-down menu here on the right side. Here you will see the Linked Folder sub-menu and then an Add Linked Folder option. Here is where you simply add your third-party MIDI folder that you've created on your hard drive. In my specific case, I want to link to the GrooveMonkey Drums subfolder that I created inside of my third-party MIDI folder for a cleaner presentation in Easy Drummer, as you can see down here under Linked Folders. It's that easy. Adding third-party MIDI in EasyBase is the exact same process as EasyDrummer 3, except I'll choose the base MIDI subdirectory that I made instead. In Superior Drummer 3, it's the same process, except the button is on the left side of the Grooves tab. And in EasyKeys, I'll go to the larger menu button, Go to Browser and Add Folder to Browser. I simply need to launch the Easy Keys browser to find my third-party MIDI down here. It's all that easy once you've decided how to organize and store your third-party MIDI on your computer. After selecting the newly added linked folder, we can simply access our new third-party MIDI files in whatever folder structure format the third-party company provides. Just like TuneTrack, some products are complete songs with different song parts, and some are organized in a different manner. As you can see and hear, Easy Drummer is working perfectly. And as I buy more third-party MIDI, I simply make new subfolders and link those, or if you drag more MIDI to a folder that has already been linked, let's say I bought a GrooveMonkey Blues Bass MIDI pack, I could drag that purchase to my already established GrooveMonkey Bass MIDI folder, and after launching Easy Bass, I simply right-click on that linked folder and select Sync File Changes. And any new folders or MIDI that has been added can now be accessed. As you can see, the new Blues folder is now here. Now that we've seen how we can install and access third-party MIDI, let me hop over to my production computer where I have a bunch of TuneTrack MIDI, but more importantly, some third-party MIDI installed and use it in a real-world situation. First, something to look out for. There's something called the General MIDI Standard. It's a more universal mapping of drum MIDI notes, meaning if I use a MIDI file in Easy Drummer, for example, that uses General Standard MIDI, it will just work right away. Luckily, a lot of companies that only sell MIDI use this standard. TuneTrack MIDI is not necessarily Standard MIDI, but Easy Drummer plays General Standard MIDI. But a warning for new users is this. You can't just buy drum MIDI from anywhere and want it to be a plug and play process. If I use reputable companies such as Drumforge or Get Good Drums as an example, they use their own special MIDI mapping recipe that is not general MIDI nor the same as tune tracks mapping. There's a problem. It's an inconvenient thing for end users like me that only want to use that company's MIDI, 
but not their software that plays it. In this case, I'm going to play a Drumforge MIDI beat. I simply play a beat out of the Gent bridge section here. It plays fine, but there's a closed hi-hat pit playing throughout and a tom rim sound instead of an actual tom. It's a great beat that's playing the wrong instruments. This could happen to some of the MIDI from the popular Get Good Drum software company as well. If I play the first beat, all seems well. Let me go down to the eighth beat. Those cymbal chokes should be more toms. Like closer to this. So when you purchase or encounter third-party MIDI that you want to use but it's not mapped correctly, you can edit the MIDI on a per-groove basis as I've just done here in Easy Drummer, which is time-consuming but possible. Or you can use a surface such as MIDIRemap.com to remap entire MIDI packs for a small fee. My preference is to find reputable companies that provide general standard MIDI so it's a convenient plug and play process. So making sure your third party MIDI supports the general MIDI standard is important. Or finding one of the few companies that actually tailor to tune tracks extra articulations and mapping such as GrooveMonkey is an added bonus that supersedes general standard MIDI. So we've defined third party MIDI bought, installed, organized, and linked to it in our TuneTrack products, let's make sure we're comfortable using it in a real world environment before signing off. All right, so I'm in a Reaper session and my buddy Steven Paracone gave me this riff. Uh, I linked his channel below. Give him a like, give him a sub. I want to put a beat to this, so let's hop over to the Grooves tab. This is going to be a lightning fast round. We're not going to hang out and produce this song or this section, but uh, you, you'll get a little bit out of this. But if you see me do anything you're interested in and I'm not delving into it, um, just check out my channel. I have a whole channel based on this stuff. So, But thank you, Steve. So now I've selected my Groove Monkey drums linked folder and here's my mega pack and here look my filters are working so this song's in 4-4 and I want a closed hi-hat behind the speed I actually don't want that I'm selecting the incorrect thing on purpose so we have an excuse to edit this and Steve is a he's a country dude he's a oh, he's a southern rock dude is what I'm more of a fan of of, uh, so anyway, let's just audition some beats better than that. Let's audition these beats in Reaper. So I'll hit spacebar, start Reaper. That, that kick pattern's a little too straight for me. This beat's a little too simple for what I want, but that kick pattern is not so boxy and square. So that's a great foundation. Let me just pick that. Now I wanted um, open hi-hats. So let's just take our third party MIDI that, that's now existing on our song track and put it in the edit play style. And that closed hi-hat is the power hand. So let's manipulate the power hand from original play, the closed hi-hat to an open hi-hat. Let's just see if this did it. Yeah. That flows and breathes big time now. But the, the kick drum's the main thing that I want to drive this, and I want a few more kicks. So let me just try uh, manipulating the amount. It's, it's kind of doing what I want, but maybe too many hits to get there. So I undid that. Let's just put it in the grid editor. And I want to add an uh on a 16th note. I want to add a kick drum right here. I've already got the pen tool selected, so here's a kick drum. I don't want to do it every time. I'll put it right here. Let's listen to this. It's, exact, it's actually exactly what I wanted. So that's great. Let's pretend this beat is perfect, even though we're just whipping it together real fast. Let's We could spend all night on it. Let's pretend this beat is perfect. Let me just change it to a verse real quick. Assuming this is our verse. Actually, this is actually the bridge section, so let me change this to the bridge section. 
And let's pretend this beat is so good that it represents what I might want the rest of the song to sound like. So this can actually act as a source file for the song creator feature. So I'm just going to drag this file in the song creator, let it eat it up. And I'll go to song parts and there it is right there. Here's the source file. The third party MIDI file that we edited can act as a source file in song creator. And let's just play super pretend because I don't want this video to be too long. Let's play super pretend that this song structure right here works. So bam, there's our instant song that we've never heard before. And pretend that this is good. So what are we missing? We're missing some fills. So let me get on the grooves tab and let me clear our filters except for the browser filter because I want to remember where we came from. We came from that Southern Rock Pack. And we're at 115, I think. We're at 115, right? Where is it? Yep, we're at 115. So Saturday night's at 120. Let's check out these fills. And there's three separate fill folders. Yep. Groove Monkey going crazy on the fills. All right, there's intro fills. Okay, for the beginning of the song, maybe that's a count in and pickup notes, which actually, is that a count in and pickup notes? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, and here's some outro notes, you know, which we know that drummers do things in the outros. Here's the verse fills. All right, and there's a bunch of verse fills. So let me just grab one. I'm just going to look at the dots. This is probably a snare roll. Let's check this out. Good. Let's pick this fill without being picky, and we'll just go from the pre-chorus to the chorus because we always want to build into the choruses, and I'll just drop it right here. And if you remember earlier, I was having a, not a bad vibe, but I just didn't want closed hi-hats, and I heard closed hi-hats there, so I'll just edit play style this. Go open hats. And let's see how our fill builds into this chorus, which we've never heard before. Yeah. There you have it. Uh, Third-party MIDI using all the features except, oh, except for bandmate. Third party bandmate does not yet bring back search results of third party MIDI. I asked like a year ago, right when Easy came out. I can't find that post anymore for some reason, but I was told that they're working on it. So hopefully they are. It's like the one of the number one requested things. So let's just hope we see it soon, and then we'll be able to get our third party MIDI uh, search results out of bandmate as well. Let's hope that's coming soon. So that's it. And I mean, I'm a skilled play uh, user of Easy Drummer, so I did this fast. But as you can see, if someone gives me professional third party MIDI, I can tear right through it like it's Tune Track MIDI, no problem. So hope you dug it. Using third-party MIDI really expands your options with few limitations and typically is less expensive. ToonTrack is fantastic for allowing this integration in their software. If you're new to ToonTrack or MIDI in general, I have many videos that cover the basics, so do check my description. This is Sean from Shooty School. I have free ToonTrack themed social and support groups on Facebook and Discord. If you want exclusive content, check out my members program. If I ever made your day or brought your skills to the next level, consider contributing. Links to all this are below. Rock on.